is going on YouTube? We are going to do something completely different today. We're going to take a break from music because it is EMS week here in America. You probably didn't know that, but that's okay. Most people don't. It's usually the third week of May, I believe. And why do I know this? And why do I care? Here's a full disclosure. I have a confession to make. I'm sure because of my name on this channel, you all think I spend most of my days buried in old manuscripts, uncovering the hidden mysteries of the past. No, it's not that cool. My primary occupation, I've actually been a paramedic for almost 25 years. Most of that time I functioned as a paramedic and a firefighter for a pretty major city near Chicago. I've also spent many years working in the emergency room. And six years ago I retired from the streets and now I'm a hospital administrator, still running ambulance stuff, basically. So there you have it, the shroud's been lifted. But it's not a complete fib, because during the time that I was a firefighter paramedic, I spent many years in college and ended up getting a history degree and a degree in classical literature. So there you have it. There's me in a nutshell. No, this is me in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. How did I get into this nutshell? So what I want to do in honor of EMS week is do a special video that I've actually been thinking about since I started this channel. I want to talk about the three strangest things that I've seen in all of my years as a paramedic. And why three do you ask? Because all good things come in threes, right? Usually. So let's get started. Now a question that often comes up is, what is the worst thing you've ever seen as a paramedic? And a lot of paramedics usually don't like to answer that question because yes, I have seen some absolutely incredibly horrific, life-changing, mind-bending things. And that's not what I'm here to talk about. I want to just talk about three things that were just incredibly odd. They're kind of gross too, but very weird that not every paramedic can say that they've seen. So these aren't the worst things I've seen, just odd. And yes, it took some time to really narrow down these three things. But I think I found some that you might, I don't know, enjoy. Maybe you could retell them at parties. And maybe you can even learn a little bit about emergency medicine, anatomy, things like that. So here we go. Okay, so the first one I'm going to title, Chicken Tender Basket. Maybe you'll figure out why toward the end. So we were dispatched to a steel mill. That was not having a very good track record as far as amputations go. This was the third amputation that took place within like six months. You might be thinking, well, that's not so bad. No, that's pretty bad. People aren't supposed to lose fingers on a monthly basis at a steel mill. The first few times, basically, machinery came down on a hand like that, took off all four fingers. Um, one of them were inside of uh, the, the tips of the gloves that they shoved into basically a cooler full of ice. The fingers were frozen. Uh, that was one of the situations. But the third situation was super interesting. So as we arrived... The story they told us went a little bit something like this. The guy was working in a machine and was reaching inside, thought the machine was off. Well, all of a sudden, it flipped on, grabbed his middle finger, and pulled it from his body. And basically, the finger fed through the machine. So when we found the gentleman, he was sitting in the break room and holding his entire arm, and he just looked white as a ghost. He was sweaty and he just looked like he was in extreme pain. To look at it, it didn't look too bad because basically the tip of his middle finger was just taken clean off. Wasn't much blood, but he was in bad shape and he just kept saying, my arm is killing me. We kind of blew off the whole comment about the arm. Meanwhile, the captain comes into the room all excited because he found the finger. I guess it was down by the other end of the machine. So he took the finger, he put it on the table next to the patient. And at first glance, I didn't quite understand what I was looking at, but then I looked at it again. I'm like, why is it attached to a shoestring? And then I looked a little closer. It wasn't a shoestring. That was basically the tendon that was attached to the end of the finger as it was attached down here in the forearm, which controls the finger. When it grabbed the finger, it literally stripped the tendon out of the forearm, out through the wrist, and out. So again, it looked like a little fingertip with about a shoestring that was about 12 inches long. Yeah. So the reason I call it chicken tender basket, if you've ever made chicken tenders, you'll probably think about this story next time you do it. There's usually that tendon in there that you kind of have to pull out. 
Well, that's exactly what happened to his forearm. Tended and pushed down with a fork. And as you can see, it is coming apart just like that. And that, my friend, is how you detended a piece of chicken. You're welcome. Good stuff, huh? So, of course, when I brought it into the ER doc, they never seen anything like that either. Everybody was shocked. Crazy story. Okay, the next story I'm going to title Rose-Colored Glasses. Wonder why that is. So in this particular situation, we were dispatched to a gentleman with a nosebleed. And most people think nosebleed, that's a pretty minor thing. When you think about things that are total BS and not emergent, you think stub toes and nosebleeds, right? You pinch the nose, it stops. Well, I can tell you working in the ER and on the street for many years, sometimes nosebleeds can be a big deal. They can obstruct the airway. Sometimes it's incredibly hard to get them to stop, especially if the patient is on blood thinners or has really high blood pressure or sometimes both. Well, this was gonna be a very special nosebleed. So we show up to the house. He's sitting there at the kitchen table and there's a little puddle of blood by his feet. He's holding a, like a t-shirt around his nose that's bloody. And uh, you know, so far so good. Typical nosebleed. So I'm talking to the gentleman and as I'm talking to him, he kind of coughs a little bit and a blood clot flops out of his mouth. Still, you know, average day, nothing I haven't seen before. So I start to talk to the gentleman a little bit. He's in his mid-30s. Turns out he's got high blood pressure and he ran out of his medication. When I checked his pressure, it is to this day the highest blood pressure that I have ever seen. It was 280 over 160. And just to put that in perspective, the blood pressure cuff only goes up to 300. So it was literally almost off the charts. The bottom number, which was 160, anytime that bottom number is above 120, we consider that the stroke zone, kind of like the emergent state of hypertension. So right away, we realized this was kind of serious, but still, we haven't seen anything yet. So we move him out to the ambulance. Well, as I'm talking to him in the ambulance, out of his right tear duct, I all of a sudden see blood form and start trickling down his face. He has a tear of blood coming down. Then it happens to the other eye. A little bit of blood trickles out and down his face. Then in a matter of 30 seconds or so, blood was pouring out of his eyes. Yeah, this is something I'd never seen before. And of course I'm asking him, are, are you okay? Are you okay? He goes, yeah, I feel fine. He says, everything looks kind of red. And I'm thinking, yeah, I bet it does. And it's strange to think of it this way. The fact that his eyes started bleeding and everything started bleeding, it's almost like it possibly saved his life as just a little pressure release so that the blood vessels in his brain didn't pop. But yeah, Next time you hear about a nosebleed, it's not always a walk in the park. Okay, now the third story is something a little bit different. You know what, for the third story, I couldn't think of a title. Maybe we'll do something fun and you try to think of a title for it. So this one's a little bit different because this is not an ambulance story. For several years, I actually worked as a tissue and organ procurer. So of course you hear about people who donate their corneas and their bone and their skin. Well, somebody's got to take that stuff. And that was me. I did a lot of eye cases where I would kind of carve out the corneas and put them in vials and then transport them so that they could uh, be used as a corneal transplant. I did tissue cases where we would take the skin from the backs of the, of the patients, just take off layers of skin, not much, just little thin layers. And then we would actually take all of the long bones from the shoulder to the wrist and then from the hips down to the ankles. And those bones could be used for a lot of different things. Facial reconstruction, even the fascia that covered the muscle of the thighs could be used to reconstruct bladders and all kinds of things. So this story involves one particular tissue case that I was on. So I lived and continue to live up in Northwest Indiana, kind of near Chicago. Well, the tissue team the rest of them were coming down from Indianapolis, which is the center of the state. So because the tissue bank is down there, they brought all of their equipment up with them and I just had to show up. So as we're about three quarters of the way done with this case, 
I start to hear them talking and saying, Oh, shit. Did you bring it? No, I thought you brought it. Oh, great. And I'm thinking, okay, what's going on? They forgot to bring the PVC pipe that's used to reconstruct the arms and the legs. I know that sounds crazy, but you take the pipes, you cut them down to size, you lay them in the area where the bone was taken, and then you bring everything up and you kind of sew it up. But they forgot it. And then they quickly realized, wait, you're from this area, right? Is there a hardware store in the area? I said, actually, there is one just about a half a mile away. We were at the county morgue and there happened to be a Van Tobel's right down the street. So I leave there in my car and I'm still dressed in my scrubs looking like a mad scientist. I show up at the hardware store, I grab the PVC pipe, and as I'm leaving this young teenage girl was looking at me a little funny and I told her, please ask what this is for. Just do yourself a favor and ask because you're definitely going to have something cool to talk about later. So she asked, I told her, and she freaked out. So there you have it. Those are the three goofiest things that I've seen. Now, there's a lot of runner-ups that I thought about talking about as well. But I just want to do a quick little short video. Just get you guys thinking about things. Hopefully helping you appreciate EMS a little bit better. If you know anybody in emergency medical services, make sure you... Congratulate them, thank them for all of the work that they do, especially through all this COVID stuff. It's it's definitely makes things more difficult for hospital and emergency personnel. So give them a hug, drop them a line, buy them a coffee, and thank them for their service. So hope you all enjoyed that. Very soon here I'm going to get back to some more music videos. And I hope to see you in the comments and elsewhere throughout my channel. But until then, as always... Be safe, be healthy, and be nice to each other.